Here are three router planes from Lee Nielsen, the larger 71 and the smaller 271, both the closed throat and open throat. These three guys right here are router planes from Lee Nielsen. Now, if you're not familiar with a router plane, it's a type of plane that I call like a joinery plane because it helps you uh, dial in joinery on your woodworking projects. Unlike a bench plane, which you might be familiar with, which is really great at flattening or smoothing boards, uh, router planes, joinery planes, help you with dados, grooves, uh, mortise and tenons, things that are joints in your woodworking projects. These guys really help you dial those in and get perfect fits uh, in those types of applications. So today, I'm gonna to take a look at both the larger uh, router plane from Lee Nielsen and two versions of the smaller router plane, both a closed throat and open throat, and I'll show you a close up uh, of the differences there. And then of course, I'll show you a couple common applications for using router planes. First up, let me show you the small router planes because they're not very complicated. What we've got here is a perfectly flat sole across the bottom and a blade that protrudes through. There's an adjustment screw here at the front that locks in the depth of the blade relative to this flat sole. So you can just unlock that and then easily change the depth of this blade and lock that in. The blade can come all the way out and of course that's useful for honing the blade. It comes from Lee Nielsen very sharp but of course a little bit of additional honing uh, will help get it razor sharp. Go ahead and put that back in through the bottom here and go ahead and lock the adjuster screw. Now there are two versions of the small router plane. There's the open throat and this is the throat across the front. And this is what's called open. It's got a little hump here. And what that does is allows you to see a little bit more clearly your work. You're gonna go ahead and work from the top like this and you can see down in there with this open throat, you can see ahead of the blade a little bit easier. The closed throat, can't see quite as well what's coming ahead. However, the closed throat has a good reference surface all the way across the front, uh, unlike the open throat version. And I'll show you why that is useful. Now in comparison to these little small router planes, let's go ahead and take a look at the larger router plane, which is right here. And you can easily see the difference in size. And really it's just a difference in application and usage. They work pretty much exactly the same way, but you're gonna be using this on smaller work pieces, smaller um, uh, joinery. This you're gonna be obviously using on slightly bigger joinery. So same basic concept, adjustment screw here at the front. Um, and then you've got a depth adjuster here at the top so you can uh, more easily dial in the blade depth, again, relative to the perfectly flat sole. This is an open throat version. Uh, and there's also a depth stop here on the blade. You can loosen the knob, dial this in where you want, and lock it in. And then as you go ahead and working, once you get down to the depth, boom, this knurled knob will stop adjusting and you're at your desired depth. So you can start a little bit higher, work, 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 and then get down and lock it right at the depth that you're looking for. Again, I'll show you that uh, in use. There's also a fence that you can add onto the large router plane and it just easily pops in either side uh, on the left or the right. And there's also a straight side of the fence and a curved side for going along curved work. And this is a good reference uh, along the outer edge of a workpiece. Um, you can set it here, set it into there and lock it in. And then of course you've got to reference certain distance from the edge of your workpiece to wherever your groove is. And of course the blade comes all the way out this one as well. Uh, go ahead and take off the depth adjuster knob from the top here. Just comes off. Take off the depth stop off of the blade. Nice tight fit there and then the blade will pop out the bottom and now you can go ahead and take it over and hone it. Now with both the uh, large blade here and the smaller one, I took it to my water stones and honed it up really just on the 8000. The um, grinding and lapping that they do at Lee Nielsen gives you a really nice sharp edge so I only had to take it to the 8000 stone a few strokes uh, front and back and I had polished that up really nicely and was taking some nice cuts. Let's go ahead and put these router planes to use. So here is a mortise for a small hinge, and here's the hinge that fits 
right in there. And what I did was I just quickly laid out where the mortise, uh, where the hinge is going to go. Uh, and then I got rid of most of the waste using a chisel, defined the three sides, uh, and then chiseled out uh, most of the waste in there, uh, but staying a little bit shy of my depth line. Uh, and now what I want to do is make sure that I've got a depth all the way across here that's exactly the same as this hinge so that when I put the hinge in there it's going to seat nice and flush to the piece of wood. And this is a perfect application for the router. I want to make sure that the depth of the blade in my router plane is exactly the depth I'm looking for for my hinge. Now I can set that uh, off of my layout line here on the front but another way you can do it is by laying the router plane onto the two hinges on a flat surface and then when the blade drops down and hits that surface that's the depth you're looking for. Now I recommend always locking in that blade using a screwdriver to really kind of clamp down. This blade can move as you're using the plane so using a screwdriver to really lock in that depth is a good idea. Another way you can make fine adjustments is before you lock in with a screwdriver just tighten it with your thumb a little bit and you can make small taps with a with a small hammer here just to make really fine tuning adjustments and then go ahead and lock it in with your screwdriver when you're ready to go. Now that I've got my blade depth locked in it's a simple matter of starting to chisel away the rest of this wood at that depth. Just coming across taking my time here. And all this waste is now going to be, the mortise is going to be exactly the depth that I've set with this router plane. And finally get in the other end here, it's a little chip. There we go, all the way end to end. Now I can check my hinge, and it's going to seat right in there and be perfectly flush with my piece of wood. Now I was using the closed throat router, and the reason is that I'm getting some really good reference not only along this edge here, but also along the front. And you could see that I was using uh, coming in at an angle here. Uh, to lever those chips out and I was getting good reference all across the front using this closed throat router. Uh, the difference with this open throat router is you can see it ahead a little bit better but I'm not getting good reference anywhere across where that hump is so especially if I turn it to the side here it's really easy to tip down uh, whereas the closed throat doesn't uh, do that. It will do it if you're over the um, mortise there but once this closed throat is sitting on the reference surface, of course it won't tip nearly as easily as this open throat one. And that's why a closed throat on these skinnier pieces of wood is really nice. Cleaning out dados and grooves is a great place for a router plane. Whether you make them with a table saw with multiple cots or a dado stack, uh, you end up with you know small little inconsistencies in the bottom of your groove or dado and a router plane can get in there and really clean it up. Nice smooth bottom, consistent depth. Now a small router plane like this, not too bad on a groove or dado this size, but obviously if you get bigger cases, you got a bunch of them. This is where the larger router plane is going to do a better, uh, faster job. It's easy to come straight across, chisel out the bottom, and then you can easily uh, unlock the depth, ratchet it down just a touch, and just go slowly to your desired depth. Unlock, ratchet it down. Take another small shaving and just keep doing that until you get a nice, consistent, smooth bottom. Now, datas and grooves, that's a really easy uh, application for this. Let me show you one of my favorite applications for the router plane. I quickly made a couple of tenons at the table saw and you can see the ratty cheek left behind by multiple passes over the 
table saw blade. Even, even if you use a dado blade, uh, it's not going to be perfectly smooth across this cheek. And I'm going to use the router plane to not only clean up that cheek, but dial in exactly the width of the tenon that I'm looking for. Now, I can do one cheek at a time, or one tenon at a time, by referencing the router plane here and coming across and just cleaning up this cheek. But it's even better to go ahead and put two tenons uh, end to end. You get better reference and you're doing both at the same time. So let me go ahead and clamp this to my bench and get started. I've got the two work pieces clamped to my bench and a little bit of a backer board just to keep them in place as I work the router plane across the cheeks. Go ahead and it's a little bit high so um, unlock the depth adjuster. Go ahead and ratchet down just a little bit here and lock that back in and take some passes and just keep doing that a little bit down lock it in and I'll slowly start wasting away these cheeks and getting them dialed in to, what, to the width that I'm looking for. Now on the other side, it's a good idea to come in from this side so I'm not blowing out that edge. I don't really have support here across the front. Uh, it would be better if I did, but um, you want to come in from both sides and that will help you not really blow out uh, your tenons. Now already that's getting a lot better and I'm getting close to the depth that I'm looking for which will give me the desired width. Now what you really want to do is go ahead and flip these over and work both sides at the same time. That way you'll be coming in equally from your outer edges and that tenon will be perfectly centered. I'm going to go ahead and just do one more pass here to show you uh, cleaning up this cheek here uh, and then you could do the other side the exact same way. Now you can see I've gotten that really smooth on this side, all exactly the same depth from my show surfaces here uh, and perfectly centering that tenon if I use the exact same depth on the other side. And this is also a great place to go ahead and use your depth stop as you're working. I turned my work pieces over to the other side and before I did it though, I set the depth stop uh, to the depth that we just did on the other side. So now I'll go ahead and raise the blade a little bit to get started on this side and then I can go ahead and use, go down all the way to that depth stop. And I know when I get there that my tenons are now the same distance from the show surfaces, which means that I've got a perfectly uh, centered tenon. And there I've hit my depth stop. I kept going down uh, using the depth adjuster till I hit the stop and I've got a nice smooth surface on this side. Same distance, got a perfectly centered tenon. So there are a couple of common applications for pulling out a router plane. Now in the small router plane, it's a very straightforward little tool. Uh, the lack of, lack of depth adjustment is a little bit annoying, but honestly in a tool this size, I think that would be overcomplicating. So you do have to use a little hammer for tapping that, um, or really just you know dial it in and then lock it in. But usually working in such small places that you really just set it to the depth you need, lock it in and you're good to go. You don't have to make multiple adjustments. Now, open throat versus closed throat. The open throat on the small one does allow you to see a little bit further ahead on your workpiece, but honestly, uh, you're working on small types of, of joints, um, and so I don't really think that's a big deal. You can't see that much further. It's a very small kind of hump, uh, allowing your eyesight in there. So I would go with the closed throat. It gives you 
a little bit better support in some applications when you're turning a certain way. Um, you could take advantage of that. And so I think the closed throat uh, is a little bit uh, better than the open throat. Now on the larger model, um, the depth uh, adjustment and depth stop are great. I showed you use for that. And I really like how you can fine tune the depth. And the open throat here, you can go open throat or closed throat. This one is the open. And you can see a lot more here. It's obviously a bigger hump. Uh, you can really see ahead of your work. Uh, and I don't know, the closed throat would definitely give you some uh, better support in some applications, but the open throat uh, does have a significant advantage really seeing you're usually working uh, forward of where you are doing a long dado or groove or something like that. And so being able to see ahead uh, has its advantages as well. Now the quality of these Lee Nielsen tools is just like everything that I've used from Lee Nielsen. It is fantastic. Everything is just really smooth, polished, has a really nice feel and weight to it. So if you want to dial in some of your joinery and get really nice smooth surfaces and also get it exactly where you want, consistent depth across your joints, I would definitely check out router planes. <music>